Hello. In this video, we look at an application of the dot product when you want to take a vector and project it onto another vector. And so we're going to start off with an idea here where we have a vector, call it V, and we'd like to have a vector that points in the same direction as V, but has a different magnitude. Um, I would like a vector who points in the same direction as V, but has a magnitude of 10. So let's look at how to do that mechanically, um, algebraically, and then we'll look at the um, geometry. Um, and then we'll get to the concept of projecting a vector onto another vector. This is at work behind the scenes, this, this idea here. So your vector is 5, negative 3, 4, and you want to find its magnitude, find out what, how long that vector is. And so uh, square, 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 add them together, take a square root, and you'll find out that it ends up being square root of 50 or 5 root 2. All right, so that's um, less than 10. Uh, root 2 is less than 2, so 5 times 2 is 10. So we have this vector whose length 5 root 2. And I want to have the vector whose length 10 pointing in the same direction as that vector. So what we're going to do is scale down our vector to be length 1. Remember how to do that? Find out the magnitude and divide each component by that magnitude. Or multiply, basically scale by the reciprocal of the magnitude. So now uh, we could simplify for sure, uh, rationalize and all that too. Let's leave it as it is. This vector has length 1. Okay, and now we take this vector who has length 1 and we're going to scale it by 10, so it has length 10. We broke it into two steps, scale it down, scale it up. We didn't have to do that. We could have found out this scaling factor that does them both at the same time. But um, if we take the previous unit vector and we times everybody by 10, the numerators have the zeros in there now, this vector has magnitude 10 and points in the same direction as V. We'll see the geometry in a second. I'll show you the pictures. Okay, um, we can cancel out the five from the denominator and turn those guys um, in the numerator to be different numbers. And then we could rationalize for sure. Multiply top and bottom by root two. And this is the simplified version of our vector who points in the same direction as V but instead of having a magnitude of 5 rad 2 like V does, it has a magnitude of 10. Essentially, we just scaled the original vector twice. Divided by 5 rad 2, multiplied by 10, so put them together. What we just did, if you look at it exactly, is that we multiply by rad 2. We didn't know it ahead of time, but that's what we needed. The multiplier was rad 2, and that'll stretch your 5 rad 2 vector to be um, the magnitude of um, vector was 5 rad 2 by multiplying by rad 2 now the magnitude of the vector is 10 all right so if you want a vector in the direction of a given vector and you have a prescribed magnitude k that you know like 10 for us then all you need to do is scale that vector by 10 over mag v or k over mag v one time scalar you don't have to scale it down and scale it up Okay. All right, great. Let's take a look at the visual here. So we have this vector. This is exactly the vector V. Um, and we want it to have magnitude 10. It has magnitude 5 rad 2. And so to make it have magnitude 10, what we did is in two steps, we scale it down. And we make that vector have magnitude 1. That's the green vector. And then we scale it up by multiplying by 10 to make that vector have magnitude 10. Okay, all right, great. It's this concept that is behind the scenes and trying to figure out projecting one vector onto another. Okay, 
Oh, sorry, not this. Okay, so we have a vector V and a vector U. The vector V is black, the vector U is green here. And we like to project U onto V. The shadow of your vector U that points in the direction of V. It's a vector itself. It's a vector projection, technically. And it's of U onto V. The symbol for that is proj, P-R-O-J, U in between is a subscript V. Kind of like log, um, where you have the log of um, something and then the subscript is there. It's kind of just like that. So the U is who you're projecting and the V is who you're projecting onto. Okay. We can look at this right triangle. We can drop down the perpendicular and look at the right triangle and use trig. Now, vectors instead of side lengths, so we should use magnitude bars. But yeah, the cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we'll use mag. The cosine of theta is the magnitude of the projection vector divided by the magnitude of the hypotenuse, of the, the unit vector, of the, the u vector, which is the hypotenuse. U isn't necessarily a unit vector, just using the letter u. All right, so that's the, so then if you want to know what the magnitude of that projection vector is, you can multiply both sides by mag u. And what you get out is that uh, the magnitude of the projection vector is the magnitude of u times the cosine of theta. Okay, all right, great. That's how long that vector is. And that's what we're gonna do from the, like, from the previous slide. I want a vector who points in the direction of v and has this particular magnitude. Before we called it k or 10. We're gonna call it now the, um, this, this mag u cosine theta is the number that we want to be the, the prescribed magnitude of our vector who points in the same direction as v. Um, I guess if theta is more than um, 90, the, the projection vector points in the opposite direction of v. We'll see that in a second. All right. All right, great. This has a name. Sometimes we overname things. But the magnitude of the projection vector is equal to the component of u along v. Comp u. V. It's a scalar projection. It's just how long the magnet is. It's just, how, it's just the magnitude of the projection vector. Okay. All right, great. Um, in a previous video, we tied together dot product and the angle between two vectors. We said that if you take the dot product between two vectors, it can be equal to the product of the magnitudes times the cosine of theta, the angle between them. Well, we are currently looking at a formula who has the magnitude of the u, u vector and the cosine of the angle between them. It's in blue there. If I take this equation and divide both sides by mag v, I'll have a way to represent mag u cosine theta. It'll be u dot v over mag v. This is the number that I want. How long the projection vector is, the magnitude of the projection vector, can be found by a simple calculation. Take the dot product between the two vectors and divide by the magnitude of the, of the vector that you're projecting onto. All right, that's great. This is our multiplier now. Remember how we have... Um, the idea of wanting a vector who points in the same direction as another vector but has a prescribed magnitude. This here is our prescribed magnitude. And we said that you don't have to scale down and then scale up. If you want to have that vector with that prescribed magnitude, you do it in one step. You take this k value and you divide it by mag v and that will be then what you do as one scalar. Okay. And so then we take this number, we divide it by mag v, and in one scalar, 
we make this the new scalar on V and we'll have our projection vector. All right, this is the K value. Okay, now let's look at this fraction on top of fraction. It's uh, u dot v over mag v all over mag v. If you have a third and you divide it by seven, you have one over 21, you multiply those together. So we have u dot v over mag v squared. That's one way to write it. But a better way to write it, using our the concept of the fact that the dot product between a vector and itself is its magnitude squared, just because the dot product is such an easy calculation, we're going to rip out the denominator here and put in its place v dot v. That's your go-to formula for the projection vector of one vector onto another. Take the dot product between the two vectors, divide by the dot product of the vector that you're projecting onto. That's your multiplier, and it's in the direction of the vector that you're projecting onto. All right. All right. This video went a little over, but we need to see a calculation. Um, we had these two vectors before, and we found out that um, in this question, we're asked for the projection of, of u onto v and also how long it is. Um, the projection of u onto v's magnitude is that how long it is. That's the component of u on in, in the direction of v. That's u dot v over mag v. We had done u dot v already, and we found out that u dot v was a uh, negative 8. Um, we found out that mag v was uh, 2 root 5. So the division of these two is how long the projection vector is, negative 8 over 2 rad 5 or negative 4 over rad 5. That is the magnitude of the projection vector. It, it's a negative, though. What does that mean? How could you have a negative magnitude? What does that actually mean? Well... It's, it's not a magnitude. That, that negative there is part of the uh, direction, basically. You see, as soon as we saw that our dot product was negative, remember from a previous video, that means that the angle between the two vectors is more than 90. It's, it's in the second quadrant. So if I'm projecting one vector onto another, but the angle is more than 90, then my projection vector points in the opposite direction. Okay. So when it comes to this formula, we have the numerator as a negative 8. We have the denominator as a um, uh, 20. And so negative 8 over 20 is our multiplier on our vector v. So negative 2 fifths is our multiplier on our vector v. And we end up with this vector who is the projection of u onto v, but because the angle, the, the, the U is the red guy and the V is the green guy, because that angle is more than 90, the projection actually points opposite direction of, of the uh, vector that you're projecting onto. And that's the visual behind the scenes. Sorry, this video was not supposed to be 13 minutes long. I apologize, but hopefully you got an idea of what a projection vector is and, and how it works. And, and so... If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this Calc 3 journey. If you have any, um, if, if you know, reach out to me, comment down below, like and subscribe, and I will uh, see you in the next video. Take care.